Welcome to Whiskey is a Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano, and you're watching my Monday series on international whiskey. Today, we're going to be leaving the Eiffel Distillery in Germany, and we're going to head over to Taiwan and take a look at Cavalan. The expression of the Cavalan we're looking at today is going to be the Sherry Oak. This is coming in at 46% ABV. And to be quite honest, these next three things are... I don't know, a little iffy. I don't know if this is a single malt. I'm assuming that it is, but there's nothing on the label that says that it is. I know on the website it says single malt. And then this is a non-age statement. I don't know if it's natural color and I don't know if they chill filter it because there's nothing on the label or the box. It's matured in Oloroso sherry casks. This is a 750 milliliter bottle and I paid $149.99 in Phoenix, Arizona. So let's get this thing poured. Let's nose it taste it, talk about it, and then if you stick around until the end, I'm going to give it a score. I can already smell the sherry. So on the nose, you do get all of those sherry notes that you probably are familiar with. The figs, the dates, the raisins, the plums. It comes across as very, very sweet. And I suppose I do get some malted notes in here as well, so I'm guessing it's a single malt. It smells like it's gonna be very thick, very viscous. I do get some cherry, some tobacco, some dark chocolate notes. Tell you what, it smells really, really good. Let's go ahead and get it on the palate, see what I think. All right, right up front, that is very heavy on the raisin. It's very sweet. I think it's drinking a little bit higher than 46% ABV, but then again, that was my first sip. There's a good oak presence. The malt is showing through, chocolate, vanilla, and all of those other sherry fruits, the figs, the dates, the plums, and of course the raisins. Let me go ahead and get that second sip down, see if that ABV tapers off a little bit, and let me focus a little bit on the finish. All right, on that second sip, yes, that ABV has toned down a little bit. I still get smacked in the face with the figs, dates, raisins, and plums. I do like the maltiness that's here. The viscosity, on the other hand, based on what I'm looking at with the glass, that looks like the legs are pretty good. I think that it, it should be a lot more viscous based on the nose. It almost seems to be very intense on the nose, but when it comes to flavor on the palate, it seems to be a little thin to me. It doesn't stick around a whole lot. Yes, you do get the figs, dates, raisins, and plums, but they quickly disappear. And what I'm left with on the side of my tongue is a little bit of barrel bitterness or wood bitterness. And if you've been watching for a while, you know that I don't really mind that. But in this case, it seems to be slightly a little bit more than I appreciate or a little bit more than I like. There is an intense sugar note in here, apart from the figs, dates, raisins, and plums. There does seem to be maybe like a candy bar sweetness maybe that's where the chocolate and the malt notes are coming from but it seems to be overly sweet like granular sugar almost to the point where you know you have that the raw sugar or sugar in the raw those big cubes it's almost to the point where it tastes like i am dissolving sugar cubes in my mouth and i do want to make sure that i'm clear that is not a bad thing it's just very intense and with the deep dark richness that is coming through on the palate and on the nose it doesn't seem to be sticking around that long and for something that is as dark and rich as this actually is i thought that the finish would be a little bit longer and i definitely thought that the viscosity or the mouthfeel would actually be backed up based on what it smells like and tastes like but just a little bit thin for me which is surprising let's go ahead and get that third sip in add a little bit of water, and then let me talk very briefly about what I found on this whiskey. All right, now let's add a little bit of water. Let that sit in there for a little bit. I lost my green straw, so now I have to uh, find a glass one or a little bit of a, uh, of a pipette. All right, so what do we know about Kavalan? Well, first of all, this was established in 2006, and the word Kavalan is coming from the old name of the county in which the distillery is in, and I believe it's the Yulan County. If I'm pronouncing that correctly or not correctly, let me know in the comments down below. Now, one of the terms that is also familiar with the whiskey world is the angel share, and because Taiwanese whiskey is 
produced and aged in high heat and high humidity, they're actually losing 12% of their spirit that's in the casks to the angel share, as opposed to 2% in Scotland. So the cask management in this distillery has to be spot on because I don't believe it could be in the casks for very long before it actually tips to the bad side. And I did read in one of these articles and I tried to go back and try to find it, but I couldn't. They actually tried to decrease the amount of angel share loss by putting humidifiers and wetting the floor within the distillery to kind of slow that process down. Now, whether or not they're still doing that or not, I wasn't able to find out. If you are familiar with Kavalin and you know more information than I do, which is probably a lot of you, let me know in the comments down below what you know of this. If you've had it before, I know they do offer other expressions other than this one. If you've had them, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you're new here and you're not subscribed to the channel and you do like this information, do me a favor and like it. Turn on that bell notification because I produce videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and consider subscribing. All right, so now that this had a little bit of time to soak in that water, Let's go ahead and coat the glass, give it one more nose, one more taste, and then we'll give it a score. All right, all of those rich notes are still there. That has gone unchanged. If anything at all, it has intensified the figs, dates, raisins, and plums. There's no doubt about it, this smells extremely sweet. Some good maltiness, some good chocolate, a little bit of leather, a little bit of tobacco. Let's go ahead and get it on the palate. All right, a little bit more spice, maybe a little bit more of an ethanol bite. Hasn't changed much with the water. The viscosity that I thought would be very viscous is still pretty thin. And then adding water kind of even thins it out more. But the overall flavor, I think, has gone unchanged with the small amount of water that I put in here. All right, so let's go ahead and get on to the score. The finish, actually, before I get on to the score, the finish is a little bit more spice forward. I do get that ABV bitterness. The tannin or the bitterness on the side of my tongue seems to have gone away, so that's a good thing. But the sugary note, the chocolate, tobacco, the leather, figs, dates, plums, all of that is still there. All around, it's a very decent, well-rounded whiskey, but the overall experience for me at this particular time is a little bit lacking. So if you're new here, my scoring system is out of five stars. Because of everything that I just said, I don't think this is a bad whiskey, to say the least. I've had other sherried single malts that I like better. And because of the price on this thing, $149, almost $150, well, $150 with tax, I have to put that into the equation. And for that, I think I would give this just three stars, three out of five stars. It's not bad. It's not great. It's fairly expensive. The overall experience in the mouth is a little bit flat for my liking. A little bit too much on the actual grain sugar, the granule sugar note, but everything else is good. If you know me, I like the figs, dates, raisins, and plums. I do like the leather and the tobacco and the chocolate notes that are in here. The malt is definitely coming through, and that does sound like a glowing review, but the overall experience, I think, falls flat just a little bit for me on this particular day. So it's getting three stars. So that's gonna do it for me for this video. Let me know in the comments down below if you are familiar with any of the Kavalan expressions. And until next time, enjoy your journey. We'll talk to you later. Bye.